All right, so I guess uh, I'm gonna start with this map since I'm already here. It's a rule tile. And basically, I am in 2019. As you can see, I upgraded. There was a console search function that I wanted to be able to use that wasn't available in 2018, so I upgraded to 2019. But rule tiles are not in the core set. We need to go to 2D extras. and install the 2D extras. And you do that by just downloading it and unzipping it to your assets folder. And this is gonna give you the tile map for older versions of 2018. This will give you the tiles and the rule tiles. So that's the only way that you're gonna get the rule tile is by installing the 2D extras. And you can make a new rule tile in the tiles subfolder. After you've set up a ton of rules, you still are missing tiles because this is uh, an isometric setup and isometric setups have, as you can see, a huge number of permutations and how they can be laid out. So if you take a look at this, you'll see that it's mostly okay. I chose a default sprite that covers up a lot of my problems basically. So you can see this default sprite showing up here for this corner. So it's showing up with this uh, rounded tall sprite that covers up all my problems uh, instead of this sprite that's got the corner and it's got the hard edge. You can see I've got some art problems. Uh, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and close in the top of this and make this corner piece work for all the corners instead of this large corner piece. Then I would have a square on top of flat area for all the corners. It'd be a square here, square here, square here, and I think that would look pretty good. And it would tie in with the the flat areas and show elevation a little bit better. I really like this. It still needs work though. As you can see, this is the wrong terminations that end like this and not like this. The way that I've come to look at this is these larger tiles have two parallel lines running in the same direction, but these smaller tiles have one line at the ridge line. And that's the thing, is that I need transitions from two parallel lines to one parallel line. And so these, these longer runs, when I go in a straight line, sometimes they don't. They don't end up working. But, as you can see, when you get the rule tile set up, it mostly works. I need a tile that sort of goes at an angle as a straight line over to this one to connect that. Uh, same thing here. And right here, you can see I've got this uh, wedge tile. And what I need is a straight line that comes straight down. So I have a few tiles that I haven't made yet. Basically, as I go through paint, you change the rules to make sure that things work properly and you also change the order of things to make sure that they work properly because you can see if I give this edge lower precedence than these ones you can see that we've got a tile that pops up right there um, so you need to look at precedence too things that are higher up the list will be triggered sooner I'm just sort of going through and making these tiles as I can. I'm calling these primitives because what they're going to do is give me an idea of where to block out my textures. So once I get my primitives placed, I can focus on making these look good by putting textures on the individual pieces and making tile sets for the mountain. And then I can do different tile sets for different areas. So this is uh, basically the first big step, big tech step for the background and this is going to help me block out areas that mobs cannot travel because my top-down game is going to have lots of mobs moving towards uh, an objective and the mountains are going to be areas where they cannot go. Before I started on this was the coloring of the map which is not perfect yet and as you can see I started programmatically laying tiles for these until I found the rule map or the rule tile and once I'm done, I'll basically programmatically grab that brush and paint this in with the same tile. And it will generate the right tile as it goes along. So 
for the spindly area here we would have one of these sort of things going on. I've done quite a bit of work in the map viewing area. I got tired of switching back and forth to scene. Uh, if I take a look at my scene you won't see anything because what I've done is I've put this script on here that allows me to actually zoom all of the objects in, uh, that are children of it. So the way it works is, so I attached this script to an object and I parented all of those objects to it. And what it allows me to do is scale them to give myself a fake zoom so that I don't have to mess with moving the camera or the orthographic field of view. This way it just scales all of the children elements to make it look like it's zooming in and out. So that allows me to do things like this where I can actually get in there and see what's going on instead of being very far out. What I'd like to do is add a highlight. As you can see, I've got all my information over here on the left. When I click a tile, it actually shows me all the information for that tile. I'd like to go ahead and add a highlight to show which tile is selected. Click and hold middle mouse button. I can pan. I can also pan with WASD. Um, so my zoom is my mouse wheel. Uh, left mouse button selects the areas. And that's, that's all I have for this uh, view area. And you can also see I've got a, a zoom camera over here. I think that'll be more helpful when I add the highlight. Um, right now I basically just zoom all the way in. Um, with this, I have successfully generated a 1000 by 1000 map. Um, and the way that I can make sure that my maps look the same every time is, as you can see, this is 10% of my width and height. I'm always going to have the same width and height. I could probably get rid of one of these variables, but if I wanted to, say, do a hundred tile map, I would change this to 10. So as long as I keep this scale 10% of my sides, I will see this again in my map as long as I don't change the position of my noise. So this way I can go through and actually take snapshots of areas and stitch them together later. So that's really going to be pretty helpful. I'm going to put a link to this zoom scale in the description. And another script that I've found that's really, really useful is save on play. Or save on run is what I've called it. So if you just drop this script into a folder named editor inside your scripts folder, it will save when you play. So in order to show that, I can just take you back up. And as you can see, we save all of our open scenes. And this has been very, very, very helpful. You may end up in an infinite loop. And the only way to break out of that infinite loop is to, uh, you gotta go through the debugger. You have to attach a process that uses uh, some C++ library. I didn't wanna mess with it. Um, it's easy enough just to exit Unity, but the problem is Unity does not save your scene when you push play. So with this script, you're never gonna lose your data if you end up in an infinite loop if you do as much play testing as I do. Another thing that I've done is organize my tiles. It's been really helpful to get these laid out in a sort of general idea of how they're going to look. Once I started doing this, I noticed I had spots that did not have tiles. I noticed that I had areas that should be filled in in this atlas that were not. So organization is pretty important. I set up the tile brush. I put the, the play button in there. I went through and tried to programmatically place my tiles and then switched over to the brush rule tile. I switched over to the rule tile from programmatically placing the 
tiles and I made a whole bunch of new tiles uh, a lot of which look like little houses um, turned in different directions I, I worked on my map viewer and uh, what I've basically come to decide from this whole process is that this is just going to be my map maker program. What I'm going to do is use this to generate data for my maps and I'm going to take that data, export it, and import it into Tiled. And from there, export it, import it into Tiled, and from there I can rebuild my maps to turn those into a, an image, a background image, and I can combine that image with my previous data to set up colliders for my models. So this is just going to be my map maker program. It's going to generate backgrounds for me that I will take into Tiled and turn into images, actual images. So at the end of this, I'll be left with one sprite, which will be so much less resource intensive than, th than going through and placing all the tiles that would be required for a thousand by thousand play area because my play areas are going to be enormous. Um, I think m mobs and mobs of monsters having to move all over the map, it's going to make it a lot more fun. So that's my update for this week. Uh, if you're interested, I'll post another video here in a week. I'll post a video even if you're not interested, it doesn't matter. But uh, hopefully you liked it and hopefully you learned something. 